All right. Okay. So a small introduction. So my name is Pawan and uh, currently I'm working as a blockchain lead at the Paramount. So currently I'm responsible for converting the functional uh, functional requirement into a technical spec. So what are the different kind of certificates we have? So it's not kind of certificate, but uh, it's uh, just we segregated these uh, different certificate like enrollment and the TLS. So what exactly the difference between them? When when we create any kind of network, first step is we, we require the certificates. So first certificate is the enrollment, second is the TLS. What is the purpose of each of them? Enrollment, or sometimes we call them as a digital certificate, we use for the uh, signing the uh, transaction. So let's consider in terms of the peer, peer endorse the transaction, right? So for creating the endorsement, we require the certificate. So each peer should have public key, private key and the certificate. So those are the enrollment certificate. Even for enrolling new user as well in the fabric, we require certificate. Uh, uh, so generally we create first, uh, there is some procedure for the registration. Second one is the enrollment. So in the registration and enrollment, pro in the enrollment process, generally we get this enrollment certificate. And the second one is the TLS certificate. So this TLS certificate is used for transport layer security uh, to make it secure communication between the different kind of uh, parties. So let's see the configuration file of the certificate authority. Okay, F so first step in the fabric network is creating the certificate authority because without certificate authority, we cannot have any kind of uh, network because certificate authority is responsible for creating the certificate for all the participants in the network. In the uh, so let's consider we have three organization networks. So in this repo, I have three organization network, and each organization have one peer that is the endorsing peer, three orderer uh, in the order organization, and each organization has dedicated certificate authority. So this is the configuration file for the certificate authority. You can see here default is the digital signature that is the enrollment certificate generally get created and this is the expiry 8760 in the hours it means one year so default expiry for the enrollment certificate is the one year and another one is the uh, there are two profiles tls and the ca this profile is used for enrolling the certificate uh, so i mean uh, creating the certificate for the certificate uh, intermediate certificate authority by default it's having 43 800 hours it means it's a five years so whatever the intermediate certificate authority certificate how they will have expiry of five years default and next stage is the tls certificate uh come let's just let me know in case if you are not able to see my font or if you want to increase it uh maybe i will just I think increase. maybe you can increase it yeah no it's good okay cool Okay, so this is the section actually, uh, this TLS section, and this is the digital signature. Uh, sorry, sorry digi yeah, digital signature is the enrollment certificate, generally we call it digital certificate as well. So using this configuration, whenever we are enrolling any kind of user, by default expiry time is one year, and even for the TLS certificate. So there is a possibility that we can have a separate intermediate CA. So in the intermediate CA also, we will have this kind of configuration and uh, uh, so we will have this uh, this expiry time. So it's a totally customizable. It depends on you, but it is recommended to have one uh, uh, sorry one years by default. And before expiration of the certificate, you you have to enroll those certificate. So you have to re-enroll the certificate and make it uh, renew. If we miss that, then there is a re really uh, complex procedure to just rotate the certificate. So in this session, we are going to see both of the approaches in case if you want to renew the certificate before the expiration or somehow the your production network is got expired and you want to just recover the network from the last point only. Because once the certificate got expired, we cannot invoke any kind of tra transactions. It will give us an error because this uh, both of the certificate got expired. That is the digital certificate and the TLS certificate. So this is the section which is responsible for creating that prop, uh, one year expiry. Okay, so let's come to the next part. Uh, what is the procedure for creating the certificate first? So you can see admin of the organization that is the certificate authority admin is responsible for registering the new user or any kind of participant in with the certificate authority. So this is the certificate authority for that organization. 
So let's consider we're talking about organization one. So organization one admin will create a registration request and let him know, I want to register this user, ABC is the user. So in the registration process, either admin can pass one secret or if he's not passing, then certificate authority default, uh, I mean, return one secret actually, just randomly generated key every time when we're registering it, it will get randomly generated and returned to the admin. So using this secret, what admin does, this admin of the organization, he just pass this secret to the end user. So it's end user responsibility to create the public key and the private key. And using the CSR, the using the CSR and the enrollment ID, he can create the certificate signing request and send again to the same certificate authority. Again, certificate authority, create the certificate for this user. Again, there are some validations, of course, and this, this certificate authority send the certificate back to the user. And this is the process where this end user get the certificate. It doesn't matter if it is the peer or orderer or the, uh, any other, because there are four node organization unit in our uh, hyperlayer fabric. First one is the orderer, second one is the peer, third one is the client, and another one is there. Okay, so this is the process for creating the certificate. But how exactly certificate authority knows and how it get generally get created. So let's see the flow. First, you can see whenever end user send the CSR to the certificate authority, certificate authority just collect the information from the CSR. Let's consider this is the user having this information. Uh, again, in the CSR generally, this user will send only the private key. Sorry, uh, sorry, it's uh, it send the only public key because private keys always confidential, no one should share with each other. So in the CSR, generally, uh, this user send the uh, public key and the certified authority information. So in this above section, you can see this, uh, what certificate authority does, he just create a hash of this above information and encrypt this hash with the certificate authority's private key, its, whole, its own private key and put it as a digital signature at the bottom of the certificate. So this is the certificate creation process. Now, uh, the certificate, if we, if I have this certificate and how I can validate if this is the authentic certificate or not, I can do the same procedure here. I can just get the hash of the above information. Okay. Okay. Just, we got this hash. And again, in this, in this information, we have certificate authority public key as well, CA information. Using that public key, I can just decrypt this digital signature and I will get one hash. If these both hashes are equal, it means that certificate is valid and it's not a tempered. And if we trust this certificate authority public key, it means the certificate is valid. So this is a procedure. It's not only in the hyperledger fabric, but everywhere it get applied. Uh, even in the HTTPS protocol, right? Uh, exactly same procedure happens. In the browser, we will have the certificate authority list already, authentic certificate authority. He just validated against that. This is a procedure. Uh, let's talk about a network topology. So what kind of network topology we're going to have in this uh, session? So in this session, we uh, so in the repo I'm using, right now I'm having three peer organization. This is organization one, organization two, and organization three. These are the peer organization. Each organization, how it's one endorsing peer. Peer zero is the endorsing peer for organization one, peer zero is for organization two, and respectively organization three. And if it is the endorsing pair, then we have to have the smart contract, right? So it have the ledger and the smart contract in each pair. And all the organization have the dedicated certificate authority. Organization one have certificate authority one, organization two have two, three. And finally, in the orderer organization as well, we have three orderer and one certificate authority. So this is the network topology we are going to use. Okay, so, okay, so first, first step, how to create an network. So you might be already aware, like how we can create the uh, hyperledger fabric network from the scratch. First of all, we have to have the certificate authority for all the organizations. Using this certificate authority, we will create the crypto material for the, all the participants in the organization in their respective CA. Once we have the created crypto materials, using this crypto material, we can create a channel artifact like Genesis block or channel dot transaction file. Once we have this channel dot uh, channel artifacts, we can run all the services, which are the peers, uh, orderers, cows DB, in case if we're using the currency database as the cows DB. And using, we have to run these services. So after running these services, we have to create the channel. 
once we create the channel we can deploy the chain code after deploying the chain code what are the business logic we have? We, we have we can invoke the transactions query the transactions and in this way our network will be up and running so if we can just verify all these steps once we have this running network what is the next step uh let's consider by default expiration time for the certificate is one year and somehow you are about to reach that expiration so what is the procedure to just uh, renew this certificate because for the peer and the orderer we have to renew the certificate immediately otherwise our network will be uh, uh, we will face any kind of errors uh, some kind of errors expiration uh, and even in the transaction flow as well endorsing peer won't be able to endorse any kind of transaction because those certificates are expired so what is the steps what are the different steps involved to just renew the certificate first one uh, let's consider our certificates are not yet expired it's about to expire maybe in a couple of weeks it's going to expire how, to, how we can re uh, renew the certificate first we have to create all this new certificates so it contains again tls and the uh, enrollment uh, certificate so this is the first step so how many components are there actually whatever the components in the hyperledger fabric those who are going to expire we have to create the certificate renew the certificate for renewing the certificate we have one script let me show you that okay so this is the script actually i have already written so within a uh, one hour it's not possible to uh, this uh, run i mean each and every step so i have already recorded the video on this but yeah i will be giving uh, i mean more details on the part like how we can uh, uh, rotate the certificate and we have to be very careful while executing each and every step so let's consider the first organization we want uh, to renew the certificate so what is the procedure so in the organization there are some entities first one is the user second one is the peers okay so these are the uh, entity whose certificate is going to expire so we have to enroll the certificate using this command and we will get new certificate along with the new public key private key in case if you are re-enrolling the identity then we can use the re-existing private key and the public key itself but uh, generally what happens the rotation is fine but uh, but sometimes this certificate get expire as well, so certificate get compromised as well so in that case we cannot re-enroll because if the private key get compromised then we have to enroll again so that we with the new public key and the private key we can just get the certificate so using this we are getting the enrollment certificate first and later on we are creating the tls certificate as well so here we are just passing on TLS profile. Uh, I mean, enrollment that profile equal to TLS. So this will create the TLS profile. For all the other organization, we have exactly the same thing. Because as for the network topology, we have one peer only. In case we have multiple here, you if you have multiple here, then you have to do accordingly. The script you have to change. For organization two, for organization three is the same. And for the order organization, we have three orders, right? So in, in that case, we have to create the enrollment certificate and the TLS certificate for all the three orders. So this is for orderer two and this is for orderer three. So this is the certificate creation and that is the first step. Now, what is the next step? So what you can do? So there will be some kind of downtime replacing the MSP. So inside the MSP, when we run this script, we get this kind of folder here. Uh, let me just show you. Okay. Rotate certificate, uh, yeah, new certificate. In this folder, all the certificate will get created according to your network. You have to change your uh, script as well in case you have something different, like more number of organizations or more number of peers or more number of uh, orderers. Okay, you can see these are the certificate. So we have only one peer. So let's consider for the organization three. So this is uh, this is the private key, and this is the certificate for this peer and which we have new newly created okay so this is for the peer there is a tls certificate as well you can see here server.cert server.key and ca.cert so uh, using this using this script we have created enrollment certificate as well as under tls certificate you can just go through this script later on but yeah this is the step actually and what is the uh, next step we have to follow we have to uh, replace the MSP while running the certificate while running our services we have just mapped some of the folder right 
So let's consider for the orderer. So this is the orderer service and we have just mapped volumes uh, for the certificates. You can see MSP and the TLS, both of the, uh, both of the folders we have already mapped. What we have to do, so this MSP folder, first of all, we can just change this MSP folder. Okay, so just change or replace the MSP folder and restart the services. Uh, we have to do it for the peers, all the peers and all the orderers. Okay, so this is the first step. Now, TLS, changing the TLS certificate is not a straightforward, like uh, replacing the MSP folder. It's having some twist actually. Uh, because while creating the Genesis, Genesis block or channel transaction file, we we uh, add those TLS certificate for the orderer into the uh, those block actually configuration block. So we have to do the configuration update there. So you can see here. Uh, next step is the configuration update. What are the orderers we have? We can do this configuration update one orderer at a time only. So in our case, we have three orderers. It means we have to do this configuration update for three times and. Another one thing, in case you have more number of channels, right now, uh, in the I'm using Fabric uh, version 2.2.1, I have one system channel and one application channel. It means in both of the channels, we have to do the configuration, configuration update. So for orderer one, we have to do two configuration update because I have two channels. So in your case, if you have maybe more than three or four ch channels, then you have to do that number of uh, times. For orderer one, two times. For orderer two, two times. For orderer three, uh, two times. It means total six configuration update we require in this uh, total flow to just make it uh, working. So in the first section, in the, sorry, in the in this step, configuration update. When we do the con uh, this update, we have to restart the orderer once we are successfully do this configuration update. After we are done with the orderer one, just do the same procedure for orderer two. Once we are done with the orderer two, we have to do for orderer three as well. Okay. Uh, another one thing, uh, let me show you like how exactly that script looks like, like uh, renewing the, sorry, adding the configuration update. Uh, first, let me show you. This first step is the fetching the configuration. So it's not a straightforward like uh, uh, just replacing the MSP of the any kind of components uh, in the TLS. Uh, so those TLS certificates are available in the configuration block. So first step, we have to face the configuration block for that particular channel. Okay. So currently I am doing it for the uh, system channel. You can see here. So this is the system channel, uh, and we are fetching the configuration block. Once we get this block, we can just decode this configuration block using config TX letter tool. So Decoding in the sense like it's a protocol format. We we can just decode that conf, uh, decode that, decode that config block to the JSON file. You can see the config.json. Let me show you the sample sample block which I have already extracted. So this is the configuration block, uh, channel configuration block. It's having all the information, policies, and everything. And at the bottom, you can see we have TLS certificate of the orderers in this section, consensus type. Uh, and metadata and these are the consenters. So in my network, we have three consenters, orderer one, sorry, orderer, orderer two and orderer three. Okay. And these are the TLS certificate, which we have to replace within a one request. We cannot do, we have some constraint. So one by one, we have to do first in the system channel, just replace this uh, client TLS certificate and the server TLS certificate. Okay. Using this, once we are done with this, yeah, here. Okay. Uh, you can see in the, we have decoded configuration block. We are just, uh, replace the TLS certificate. So in the renew certificate, we have created the TLS certificate for the orderer as well, right? In the orderer, whatever the new cert TLS certificate we have created in the new certificate, we have to add that certificate. First, we have to decode that certificate into, I mean, using base 64, we have to convert it. Once we have converted it, you can see, uh, okay, here. Using config TX letter, again, we have to encode this block, config.json, and what are the modifier, modified configuration block? What is the modified configuration block? It is just adding this TLS certificate uh, in the bottom section of this config.json folder here. It's modified config block is nothing but just updating this section, client TLS cert, 
and the server TLS cert. You can just automate this script as well. I have just, uh, I am just decoding it and manually adding it. But you can, uh, you can just uh, automate this procedure. Once we convert this uh, modified configuration block into protocol format, so using config TX letter tool, we have to uh, compute the update using both of these block. Okay, so this is a procedure for standard any kind of the configuration update. Uh, throughout the whole fabric, uh, generally we do this kind of configuration update only. Okay, so again, decode, just add some kind of wrapper. And finally, we have to send this to the orderer. Uh, this is the configuration update uh, transactions. It get added and success. once we are done with this system channel, Immediately, we have to do it for the application channel as well. The same procedure, only difference is name of the channel. Okay, just let me. Yeah, here, channel name. Channel name we are doing here for the my channel. That is the application channel. Okay, after doing do these two steps, we have to restore the orderer one with the latest TLS certificate. Because in the orderer, uh, in the Docker Compose file, you can see, we have TLS certificate as well right here. Now, before restarting, we have to replace this TLS certificate as well. I mean, that is newly created. And orderer configuration block, orderer configuration block already have this latest TLS certificate, which we have created. Again, here as well, we have to replace those certificate and just restart the orderer one. So this step, we have to do it for the three times because I have three orderers. For each orderers, we have to do. And another one thing in, so I have two channels. See, one is a system channel and another one is the application channel. In case you have more than one application channel, then we have to do that number of times this applic uh, this configuration update. So let's consider one scenario. We, we have one system channel and uh, three application channel. So in that case, we have to do four configuration update for one, order, uh, for one orderer. So if we have three orderer, then 12 times we have to do the configuration update. And another one thing, make sure you are doing this very carefully because if you're missing one step, then it can spoil your whole day. Just do this exercise maybe uh, maybe a couple of times earlier on your local machines before doing on the production, or maybe you can replicate that production scenario on your local machine and just try to run all the script one by one carefully. Okay, uh, so this is the straightforward. If we don't have expired certificate, uh, expired network, but, but another one thing, what if you have the expired network, which is already, all the certificates are already expired because sometimes we forgot to renew, uh, renew the certificate. After one year, our network will not be up and running. They will not be communicate with each other because the TLS certificate are expired. Even digital certificates are also expired. So that is the little complex procedure compared to the previous one, okay. So uh, I have created one YouTube video just for replicating both of the steps. First one, first one is for just renewing the certificate of uh, without expired certificate or renewing the certificate for expired certificate as well, these two steps. So there are some additional things we have to do uh, for the, in case of the, our network is expired. So once the network is expired, you won't be able to invoke any kind of the transactions. For that, we have to add some kind of uh, environmental variable in the orderer. So to, to do the, some kind of time shift again, the procedure is exactly same. Only some, some of the differences are there. Uh, so let's consider your network is already expired. What is the steps? First one is the creating all the certificate. Like that is the enrollment certificate. Second one is the TLS certificate. That is exactly same step what we have. saw in the previous, uh, section, next one is the updating environment for the orderers. So what is this? Let me show you in the Docker or uh, Docker Compose file. Our network is not running. Then how we can do the configuration update? Because for doing the configuration update, we require valid certificate and all right for the orderer. So there, there is a hack kind of, I mean, maybe we can say there is a privilege this community has already made. So these are the three flags actually. Orderer, general, TLS, TLS handshake, time shift. Second one is the cluster, TLS handshake, time shift. And third one is the uh, orderer general authentication, no expiration check equal to true. So let's consider your network is expired yesterday. So in that case, you we have to shift our time 
by that particular hours it, in 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 this case i have done this time sheet by 200 hours but it is not required in case your your network is expired yesterday then we can make it like 48 hours or something here and these flags are responsible for making this time shift for the tls handshake first and another one uh, generally this uh, certificate check also happens so it will just uh, set one flag that is the no expiration check it will not check the expiration for the certificate if we're making this true it means if we are setting these variables uh, we we don't need to worry we can just invoke the transaction with the orderer because orderer will just not consider to change just check the expiration of the certificate second one this tls handshake time shift just uh, shift the time of that particular as whatever we are spacing here so we we have to run, we have to add these three environmental variable in the orderer and restart the ordering service after restarting the ordering service, all the three orderers, now we can do the same steps what we have done in the previous section, replacing the MSP and restarting the again other services. Next one is the configuration update for each orderer. Again, uh, the procedure is almost exactly same. There is only difference. Uh, in case your network is expired, the, we have to add these three environmental variables in the orderer. And uh, we have three orderers, then we have to do it for the all three orders one by one. We cannot do this configuration update for all the order at the same time. So make sure you are doing only one at a time. In case you have five or seven, then, then you have to do one at a time. And for the system channel and application channels. So whatever the order you have, and whatever the channel you have, you can just multiply and you can get number how many times you have to do this configuration update. Okay, another this configuration updates I was talking about, right? This is the general uh, general flow. So how exactly it happens? First of all, we have to get the configuration block from the uh, channel that we generally get in the uh, Proteo format. So from that particular full block, we'll just convert that some specific part. Uh, first, we convert that into JSON format and get some uh, configuration dot JSON that uh, some kind of wrapper will just remove it. Later we will add again, extract that configuration JSON block. Next one is just modify it. Modify it means we are just adding the TLS certificate of the orderer in this. Once we add this modified, we have to again convert into the protocol format because this config TS letter tool, uh, we we use this config TS letter tool to just compute the update or encode or decode. So using this protocol format, we can just compute the update and finally we get updated uh, protocol format block and in in this step we have just removed uh, this uh, this some of the portion we have to again add that wrapper into the update uh, updated json format and finally just add into the uh, finally convert into the protocol format and and last stage we generally send this transaction to finally uh, to the orderer so this is the configuration update block uh, this is the configuration update flow so generally we follow in the hyperledger fabric uh, okay, so uh, another one thing here. Uh, okay, so one flag is there, TLS handshake time shift. So this flag you have to provide only if your network is expired and and we have to add those orderer time shift only if our network is already expired. If we network, if we have a network with the running condition, but the certificates are going to expire within a couple of days or a couple of weeks, then we don't need step. We don't need this step actually. And in this uh, script as well, we don't need to pass this uh, flag as well. TLS handshake time sheet uh, 200 hours. Okay. This is only required if our network is expired and we have to let the orderer know that uh, we have uh, shifted the time actually with uh, this particular time hours and it will just check that what are the variables we have provided there. This is another one change. So in this uh, script, actually, I have added because uh, I I just can uh, just rework uh, recover the network which which was expired. So I created the scenario just recover the network. Uh, in the in the YouTube video, I have just uh, created a network, expired the certificate, and again I have done this exercise on that existing network. This that's why you can see this flag here. Okay, another one thing, just give me another one thing, you might be wondering like where we record, <coughs> <coughs> where we 
where we require that uh, private key, public key for the peers and orderers. So uh, I'm sure you uh, you guys are already aware about the transaction flow. First, just client create a signed transaction proposal and send to the endorsing peer. So endorsing peer just verify this indo, uh, this transaction, like whether user is valid or not, if he is allowed to do the transactions and all. And finally, he creates a read set and write set and endorse the transaction. Endorsing the transaction is nothing but creating the signed again proposal. So for creating the signed proposal by each endorsement, we require the private key. So we sign the transactions and you know, uh, add that certificate of that peer as well. So in this step, we require the peer certificate. If it is get expired, then we won't be able to do here. Here itself, we can will get blocked here. Uh, once we have the renewed renewed certificate, this endorsing peers send the proposal, this invocation back to the client. Again, uh, it's client's responsibility to collect all the necessary reendorsements and check. Uh, using discovery service there are some uh, there are some steps right the discovery service just check like if uh, for this channel for this uh, chain code how many endorsements are required did we get those those are endorsements if we have uh, endorsement policy each organization should the endorse uh, get, uh, endorse the transaction so in that case it just validate it and send this transaction proposal that is the invocation generally we call send to the orderer so leader of that all again here we have one leader here so so the one of the orderer will be leader and he will create a block after creating the block orderer also need to sign that block right at the end of the orderer we generally get one uh, signature so that is the orderer signature uh, we can see uh, so this orderer create the sign a block and send back to the leader pair of the organization. So again, it's leader peer's responsibility to distribute that block to finally all the peers in the same organization and uh, their validation takes place and finally block get committed into the uh, ledger. Fine. Okay. Uh, before that, like uh, this is a very comp, uh, I mean, it's a little complex. So make sure your certificates are not getting expired and I mean, before the time you have to do those kind of checks and everything, right? In case, if your network certificate got expired, then you have to follow these all these steps. So let me show you uh, step by step again from here. Let's assume our network is already up and running, but because of the some circumstances, we couldn't uh, renew our certificate and those certificate are expired now and our network is not up and running. So in that case, first step is creating the certificate. So in the repo, you can see, let me show you. Uh, the first step is creating the certificate. So where is the script for that? Renew cert.hs. So this script is responsible for creating endorsing certificate, sorry, uh, uh, digital certificate, that is the endorsement. Second one is the TLS certificate. Uh, sorry, uh, it's not endorsement, it's enrollment. I, I, so in first one is the enrollment certificate. Second one is the TLS certificate. So this script is responsible for creating all the certificate. Once we have the certificate, what is the next step? Next step is uh, restarting the services just here. Okay. MS, re replacing the MSP. Once we have this certificate and all right in this uh, new certificate, we have to just copy this MSP folder because in the MSP we have public key, private key. Here, key, uh, key store is the private key actually, and public key generally we have in the certificate only. Let me show you one sample certificate as well. So this is one of the certificate. I just uh, converted into readable format. So in the certificate we have this kind of information. Maybe I can show you directly uh, in the web browser as well. Connection is secure. Certificate is valid. How it's getting validated? The same procedure. What we for uh, what we just saw here. Uh, certificate validation. So this is the issued to dot google dot com organization issued by who has. This is the certificate authority. Uh, validity period expire on. So this is the expiration. So the certificates are going to expire. Sorry, issued on. This is the issued on. Expiration is fourth July two thousand twenty two. 
So, uh, and this is the fingerprint I was talking about. At the bottom of the certificate, we have fingerprint is nothing but a digital signature. So, this certificate authority just converted this uh, all the information at the top and create a hash and you, uh, just encrypt that hash and finally put at the digital signature at the bottom of the file. And we can just get more information as well in this certificate. You can just check any kind of, uh, it's a, these are the X509 standard certificate. Doesn't matter like if you are using in the X509, I mean, hyperledger fabric or maybe in the STTP protocol. These are the general standards actually. Once we replace the MSP, restart the services. Once we restart all the services, now next step is uh, just uh, do the configuration update. So for the configuration update, you can see uh, in the rotate certificate folder, there are two steps uh, I have uh, added. Step one and step two. In the step one, again, we have to do for the orderer one. So again, uh, in the orderer one, phase the configuration block from here. Uh, that is for the system channel. So we are doing the system channel in the step one. We are doing the system channel for, uh, sorry, application channel in the step two. So first we, we just phase the configuration block, make necessary changes. Just add the TLS certificate in at the bottom of the configuration file and just send this configuration update to the orderer. So this is the step uh, step one for application channel as well. We have to do immediately, and once we done with the application channel as well, we can restart orderer one because we are done with the orderer one. We have another three orderers in the network, right? So for three orderers, again go to the step one, do it for orderer two. For order two also, we have the exactly same steps. Maybe uh, I would recommend to just do this step by step and just verify if everything is working fine. And once you have confidence, like every uh, confidence, uh, it's working fine, then you can just execute this step in one go as well. And uh, there is another one, uh, one thing I want to mention here. I was just converting this uh, TLS certificate and pasting into the modified configuration. So make sure, uh, you can just do some kind of automation using JQ uh, tool. Uh, so I was using here JQ tool as well, but it was a little easy for me to just copy and paste. Uh, so, so that's why I did that, but you can make that automation. Uh, you can just create a pull request to this repo as well. I would be happy to just uh, merge it. Uh, so these are the steps for the orderer two. Again, we are doing this for the system channel. For application channel as well, we have to do the same steps here. And finally, once we are done with this, just restart the orderer to us. And you can just check the orderers are communicating with each other because they generally meant uh, create the leaders among them, right? Even though we are doing this configuration uh, update, they will be able to communicate with each other after updation. Just make sure replace the TLS and restart the orderer after doing this step only. First do it for the system channel and do it later on all the application channel we have. So these are the different steps involved in the configuration update and the certificate rotation. Uh, another one thing, uh, we, we didn't talk about the users, right? So I have one API folder here and in the API folder, so generally we register the new users as well. Uh, again, when we are registering the new user, that's fine. Uh, we new, new user get registered first and date, then the certificate get created and finally stored into the wallet. But what what if we have already existing user and those certificate got expired? So there is another one thing in the registration process. You can see this is the responsibility of the admin of the organization. In the app 2.0 app, helper.js is the file. And inside this, we are doing the registration and enrollment. So admin of the organization, because for registration process, we require admin organization object like it's uh, confidential data. So admin will just register the certificate, uh, register, create a registration request to the certificate authority. Here we can see it's passing the enrollment ID and he is not passing any kind of secret. So generally the certificate authority written on secret here. So we have to store this secret somewhere so that next time if we want to re-enroll or enroll, enroll the user, then this uh, secret is required actually to re-enrolling the user. So in the uh, in the API side, make sure to store this secret 
as per my understanding, we have to store this secret and reuse them in the enrollment process again. So right now we are not storing here, but using this secret, uh, actually user can just uh, initiate this uh, CA dot enroll because in this in this method, the CSR gate created and finally sent to the certificate authority and public key, private key are also getting created in this uh, step only. And finally, we get this enrollment object. So enrollment object will have the certificate and the private key we are putting into the wallet. If we are storing this secret, it means even though our certificate got expired, we can renew it just by uh, exposing one more uh, script here just for the renewal. Uh, so this is the steps we have to make sure to have it. Uh, in the certificate authority configuration file, you can just tweak a little bit with this uh, expiration time in case uh, if you want to reproduce at the, lo at the local machine. So let's consider you can just make this uh, 24 hours. Okay. Just make this 24 hours and create a network. Uh, on the next day, our, your network will be expired and you can just follow this step make sure you are doing exactly uh, the same, uh, whatever the recommended save here we have. Another one thing, you can do some time shift as well. Okay, in the time shift is, uh, it's not a recommended, but just kind of hack to make uh, this exercise working on your local machine. Uh, you can just shift the time of your machine back and do the procedure actually. If you're doing the time shift, then our network will be up and running because let's consider our network got expired yesterday. And we are doing the time shift by 48 hours. It means our time will have date of two days before, right? So in that case, our network will be up and running only because the time on our machine is different. But generally, it's not recommended because our this production network get deployed on some some on virtual machines or maybe Kubernetes or the SOM. But procedure is exactly same, like whether your network is on the local machine or maybe in the single machine. SOM network or maybe the Kubernetes. So these are the steps we have to make sure to follow in the certificate rotation. Uh, so in case if you have any kind of the doubt, maybe we can discuss on that part. Hello. Yeah. Hi, Pawan. Hey, hi, Manju. Hi, yeah. Kamlesh. Uh, thanks for this sharing uh, and uh, I have few doubts in this. Yeah, yeah, please. Uh, actually, in the uh, fabric CA server config.yaml file, uh, by default, the uh, CA certificate has five years uh, expiry and uh, the parent order certificate, PLS certificate has uh, one year expiry, right? Uh, once uh, the, the network uh, expires, if we mm -hmm. want to uh, renew the certificate uh, for uh, the peers and the TLS for uh, Five years means then what we have to do? Five years, see, I mean, this is the for the intermediate certificate authority. If we're not using, then uh, that's fine. But in case, uh, just correct me if I'm wrong, if I understand the correctly your question. So you, you want to ask like uh, how to renew the certificate for the certificate authority or TLS certificate, right? Uh, no, for TLS and uh, enroll certificate. Okay, okay. For the certificate authority or uh, for peer and order, you are asking? For enrollment certificate and the TLS certificate, the digital signature and the TLS. Yeah, but for the peers or orderers or maybe users to, to whom you are. Uh, see, for I mean, peers and orderers. Okay, okay. Yeah, I mean, this is the state. Uh, uh, this is the discussion, whatever we have right now, yes. So, uh, so we. Uh, we are doing this in, uh, renewing of the certificate for this certificate only, like digital certificate first and the TLS only. Okay. Okay, the script we have already here. And first we are just renewing the uh, digital certificate and later on the TLS certificate. Yeah, yeah we are doing that. But uh, we can, but in the expiration, or it is for one year, right? We yeah, can yeah. update that with, with uh, some five years to 10 years. Yeah, okay, like okay, it. okay. Yeah, okay, I got it. Yeah. See, uh, yeah, so we can do that. Uh, we can do whatever we, uh, I mean, whatever the expiry you want to say it here, just make, uh, so in the certificate authority, the configuration file, you will have to change this and just restart the certificate authority. Okay. After that, whatever the enrollment you are doing, 
it will pick this expiration. So in case you have made it 10 years, then whatever the new certificate you are creating, digital certificate, it will have the expiry of by default 10 years. Oh, okay. Yeah, and in this section, we can- We have to restart the CH server, right? Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. For making it reflected immediately. Oh, okay. Then if the root CA certificate got expired, means? Root CA certificate got expired. And that is the CA certificate. Okay, by That's default. Five, five okay, years. By default, CA certificate, uh, CA certificate have expiry of 10, 10 years by default. And we can renew the uh, renew in the same way as well. See, I mean, when we create the certificate authority, right? He just create mm -hmm. the public key, private key, and self sign the certificate. The same way we can renew the certificate for certificate authority as well. I mean, just it is just a standard procedure for renewing the certificate. Doesn't matter if it is the peer certificate, orderer certificate, or CA certificate. Oh, okay. Okay, I got it. Uh, then my next question is uh, uh, in the config block that uh, that is uh, when you are fetching the block from the channel right mm -hmm. yeah. uh, in that uh, you mentioned to update the order TLS certificate right yes yes, yes this one uh, I also did that I am able to perform invoke and query it is working but uh, when I in that uh, renew network uh, when I try to uh, create a new channel or when I try to add a new organization, it shows me the error like uh, organization admin certificate uh, is not valid. Because in this uh, channel config, it uh, also contains the org admin cert. If you scroll up, means you can see it. Is. Each organization admin certificate is there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you are adding a new organization in the existing network, right? Yeah. Okay. So for adding a new organization, the procedure is little different. Yeah. The mm -hmm. procedure is different that I know, but mm -hmm. in this config file also, we have the each organization admin certificate. Uh, before you updated the order TLS certificate, right? No, That's this is the, the cert. Okay. This is the certificate of the certificate authority, not the uh, other any, I mean, peer or orderer. It's having the default 10 years of expiry. No, CA set and also it also contains the admin set. Uh, this no, admin where, set, where is it? Yeah, in the first one. This one? Admin, right? Yeah, that is. No, 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 no. certificate no, no. is the admin set. No, no, this is not admin certificate. It's a node organization unit is admin. Which means CA, you are mentioning it. CA admin set. Uh, yeah, I certificate. Okay, as uh, per, okay. Mm -hmm, sorry. This peer or this peer, uh, organization unit identifier is peer, right? That peer certificate yeah. is, I think, uh, the organization admin. Certificate. See, I mean, uh, what happens? See, uh, the, we have four organization, uh, node organization unit, admin, client, order, and peer. What it's specifying is, this is the certificate authority certificate. So it's specifying if the certificate is created by this certificate authority, and the node organization unit is the admin, then that certificate is the valid. So this is the certificate of the certificate authority. It's having by default 10 years of expiry. So these all the certificates you can see exactly same are there, right? Uh, One, no, two. it's not same. If you uh, read in some other open SSL means you can find these are uh, not same. No, no, exactly same are there. I'm sure on that because in the node organization unit, uh, let me show you in, uh, where is that? Okay, this is the certificate we generally add. Okay, in the config.yaml mm -hmm. config file. And this is the node organization unit get added. So here, we are using the exactly same certificate. That is the certificate authority certificate. CA cert, localhost 9054, caorder.com for all the node organization unit. One, two, three, and four. Exactly same certificate we are using. It means we are saying, use this certificate authority certificate and whatever the node organization units are there, if let's consider I am the certificate authority and my certificate is this one, whatever the certificate I am signing and it's having node organization unit as one of them, like client, peer, admin and orderer. So allow them to do just do the interaction with the network. If we are other than this node organization unit, then the certificate will not be valid. In case 
we have the node organization unit client, but the certificate is not signed by this certificate authority. It means that certificate is also not valid. Just, just uh, you can verify it. These are the exactly same certificate, and these are the certificate authority certificate. Uh, which means uh, now you can uh, in this renewed network you can create a channel or you can add an organization. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So channel. yeah, and uh, this validation doesn't take place here. I mean, uh, using this organization admin. See, this is the certificate, right? Yeah. Certificate of the certificate authority. Whatever the admin, uh, whatever the admin we have certificate. So those certificate get used for invocation. Any certificate whose node organization uses the uh, unit is the admin. They can just add a new organization depending on the policy we have. The by default, I think the majority. It means in the three organization we require two organization signature, two admins of the organization uh, to just invoke the uh, transaction successfully. Uh, did you get it or any yeah, confusion? I, yeah, I got it. But uh, uh, in when I fetch the config file in my file, I got a different certificate in this. Then, then you have uh, to make sure, like in the configuration, uh, how you are creating the certificate. Just make sure, like how you are uh, creating this config.yaml file, because it gets mm -hmm. stored uh, in the MSP and it will go to the node organization unit only. Okay. Uh, then my next question is: uh, this no expiration check uh, flag is right? Yeah. Uh, this flag yes. is used for uh, order TLS search or for, oh, only order. Uh, order. Yeah, only order. Only order. Only okay. order. Because okay. let's consider our network is already expired. We have to interact with the order only, not the peer or something, right? To make that update. This TLS certificate get added into the configuration block and the config orderer only have the configuration block, right? I mean, we can do the update and they have some privilege. So we have to update here only. So we that's why we, we have only flag for the orderer. Okay. Okay, then, then my next question is, uh, uh, like, uh, for everything we are using TLS certificate only right? for invoke transaction or a query transaction uh, for that. Then for channel creation and auto addition, where we are going to use the admin certificate that is like no, auth no. certificate. Okay. certificate. So see, these are these are the different things. First one is the TLS. TLS is nothing but the transport layer security. And whatever the communication they are having the, between this party, that should be uh, confidential, right? If someone have intercepted that request, they can just check the data in, inside that. So for that purpose, we have this uh, TLS in the, even though in the HTTP, you can see here. So what are the communication happening between this uh, server and this browser? It's uh, secure because this is the, this is using the, uh, this valid certificate first and uh, generally you know this procedure how it happens uh, browser first create uh, so just hit that domain so that whatever the domain is there he just written on certificate that after the certificate he just browser just validated that certificate if that's a valid because browser have valid certificate authority and he create one random phrase a random generator key and public public key is available in the certificate using that public key that randomly generated key will get encrypted and finally sent back to the uh, server server again validate if uh, server can decrypt because server have the private key so server just uh, decrypt that request and just get the random gen randomly generated key so at that time browser and the server only have that randomly generated key after that they can communicate with each other using that randomly generated key using encryption right so this is the generally uh, communication happens, but in the peer to peer communication, we have to have the exactly same approach. So these TLS, uh, TLS certificate are used for having the secure communication. So why we're using admin certificate for creating the channel. So any kind of invocation or any kind of query, we generally use the client certificate. It could be admin or it could be a, a, a user as well, right? So. Yeah. 
as per the policy who can invoke the transaction or who can query the transaction is defined in the policies in the uh, configuration block so for that even though i have admin certificate but my cert my certificates are not signed by the certificate authority then i am even though the certificate is valid i won't be able to interact with the network right because the certificates are not valid and uh, not author not authorized by that particular certificate authority so th these are little different things tls is used for just having the secure communication and admin or client certificate are used to to do some particular operation depending on the policy we define in the configuration block in the channel creation as well you can see okay let me just check here okay channel creation we are just sending this uh, where is yeah here in the channel creation we are setting the uh, global for the organization one where we are using the admin you admin user here that is the msp because for creating the channel we require admin certificate okay another one thing for having the communication with this orderer we cannot have a communication with orderer without tls certificate that's why we provide the tls certificate for that orderer to have this whatever the channel creation process secure got it yeah uh, any other question uh, no. uh, guys any other question you can ask me i mean anything like not only on this rotation or something if you are confused with Okay, I think uh, then we are almost done yeah. with the time. Yeah. Okay. So, any more question from anyone? So, anyway, this session is recorded and it will be published on Hyperledger YouTube. Yeah. Uh, uh, one one more thing. See, I mean, I have done this practical demo multiple times and I recorded a clear session as well. You can see uh, on the screen uh, this certificate rotation or renewal for record exp uh, to or record the expired network uh, with this different kind of script so i have just recorded one hour session so inside this everything is cleared even there is one medium article as well you can just go through it and just try to uh, explain everything here yeah so uh, even even i shared this medium and youtube uh, detail in the meetup event or you may be found you can say it here also and also you can share your github repository <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah, okay. Because yeah, yeah, okay. So in this YouTube uh, description, you know, so we have everything like uh, GitHub repo, Postman collections, and everything. I'm just sending it in the chat as well. So uh, I think Don, then it's, it's yeah. We I think we are good to close. I think yeah, good to close, and then. I will share this recording over the hyperledger. <laughs>